The intercontinental ballistic missile was the most feared weapon of the Cold War. Land-based ICBMs can be launched at a moment's notice, within minutes exiting the Earth's atmosphere. Then a re-entry vehicle descends to Earth half a world away, carrying a nuclear payload capable of instantaneously incinerating a city. In a speech on January 1st, North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un said his country is close to test launching an ICBM. The North already has the technology to launch a nuclear weapon against South Korea and Japan. Deploying an ICBM with nuclear warheads presents high bar technical challenges, but experts say testing of ICBMs is the next stage in the country's apparent effort to become a global nuclear power, one capable of striking parts of the U.S. Donald Trump tweeted, it won't happen. So what are Trump's options for halting North Korea's nuclear program? One involves high-pressure diplomacy, convincing North Korea's ally China to rein in its neighbor's nuclear ambitions. China might not have that kind of leverage, but Trump accuses Beijing of not even trying. China, he tweets, enjoys one-sided trade with the U.S., but won't help with North Korea? Nice. Beijing wants North Korea to abandon its nuclear program, but doesn't see it as a direct threat. Another theoretical diplomatic option, direct talks with North Korea something Trump at one point indicated he was willing to do over a burger with Kim Jong-un. One problem with this approach is that Pyongyang has made it clear it's only interested in mutual threat reduction. Trump would likely have to indicate he's open to a U.S. military drawdown in South Korea. Seoul would not be pleased by this notion, to say the least. Trump could also exercise military options. That could take the form of a limited surprise attack. The U.S. would likely rely primarily on stealth aircraft and cruise missiles launched from ships and submarines. After they destroyed the North's air defenses, B-2 bombers could follow, dropping massive ordnance penetrator bombs. This type of attack would, according to geopolitical security firm Stratfor, likely dismantle or at least severely damage North Korea's nuclear production infrastructure and nuclear weapons storage sites. But a surprise limited strike carries enormous risk, there's no guarantee it could find and eliminate all the country's nuclear assets. Its mobile launch tractors and their medium-range ballistic missiles, for example, would be difficult to target. And such a move risks massive retaliation from the North against U.S. ally South Korea. North Korea has long-range artillery that can reach Seoul, where 40% of the South's population resides. In the event of a counter-strike from the North, U.S. reinforcements, including ground troops, would likely be needed to halt an advance into South Korea from the North's million-person army. Another option, a U.S. invasion and occupation of North Korea. Pyongyang might use that heads up to launch a preemptive strike of its own. As the U.S. well knows from its experiences in the Middle East, regime change entails the risk of creating even more instability at untold costs and a vast North Korean populace with little contact with or knowledge of the outside world boosts the degree of difficulty. So back to our question, what are Trump's options? The diplomatic ones seem few, the military ones are all extremely high risk. That's the short answer.